Tech Association of Nigeria recently hosted an interactive session on accelerating intra-African payment with the Pan-African Payment Settlement System Leadership Team. This was in recognition of the role of the fintech ecosystem as a critical enabler of cross-border payments, simplifying transactions across the African region. Given his opening remarks, Mr. Patrick Akimutong, member, Board of Trustees, Fintech Nigeria, Belief the PAPS payment infrastructure provides an opportunity to accommodate banks, fintechs, traders, and services firms to facilitate transactions in the region. Uh, whichever way you want to look at it, look at it as a big highway that is accommodative of everybody. Uh, whether you're a fintech, whether you're a bank, whether you're a central bank, whether you're an importer, whether you're an exporter, whatever you need to do, there is need to, for a connecting point. Those connecting points have largely operated outside of Africa. And I, I have a personal experience. I used to work for EcoBank. Uh, and we, EcoBank operates in uh, 35 countries in Africa. I was privileged to build the first Pan-African switch or lead the building, uh, which covers 33 countries today. Uh, on the EcoBank network. It connects with a lot of other players, but PAPS is the big umbrella. Uh, you have such also in North Africa, you have ESEV or whichever switch in South Africa, you have Ken switch, you have. So we have a number of big switches, but which one provides umbrella for everybody across Africa? That's PAPS. Mr. Ositadima Ugu, Head Technology and Operations. Perhaps in his presentation described fintechs as indirect participants connected to platforms through sponsorship by commercial banks. He listed the steps for fintechs to register on the platform. Who are the direct participants? Central banks and commercial banks are the direct participants. The indirect participants are switches and the fintechs. They are indirect participants. Now, central banks, because they are the, the, if we get into a country, the first thing we do is that the central bank will sign up to PAPS. We get the central bank integrated. Uh, then we start integrating the commercial banks in that region. Now, if it is a country that has a national switch, a national switch, the central bank is the one to take a decision to say, let all the um, uh, uh, entities in that country connect through the switch or not. We have countries that have switches, but they may not be national switches. And we will discuss that as we, we progress. So these are the, the, um, the uh, participants in PAPS, the stakeholders, two participants, direct and indirect um, participants. What can we do to participate? Four steps, very simple. Now, first, we started by showing you that central banks sit in the governing council of PAPS. And so it is just right to say that we don't do anything in any country without uh, making sure that we have um, the clearance of the regulators to avoid when you launch out there, um, they, it comes back right to you. The two... One and two there, as you can see, highlighted in yellow, are the two most critical processes, really. Uh, one is sign an agreement with PAPS. Sign an agreement. What are the two agreements you need to sign as a fintech? As you can see there, fintech signs an indirect participant agreement with PAPS. We will send the pack to you, and you will see the email, an email after this where you can request and we send the pack to you. Now, of course, that pack includes different things, the name of your company, your address, your resolution to participate in PAPS, and a few other legal related documents which you can fill easily. That's number one thing. Then number two is letter of no objection from the central bank. Every commercial bank today, in Nigeria about 18 commercial banks are alive. Uh, others should be live in the course of the month. Um, and those commercial banks, every one of them got 
a letter of no objection from CBN. There's a procedure we have already come up with with the central bank. So even if you have access to central bank, once you say, um, if, if you send an email, if you decide to send directly to CBN to say, somebody share with me an in, um, uh, indirect participant uh, procedure for PAPS, they will send that to you. Indirect participant, or call it technical integration uh, 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 form, Procedure for CBN, they will, uh, for PAPS, they will send that to you. But if you also contact us, we can write the CBN and say this fintech wants to connect, share the list of requirements with them. And you will see those, the list of the requirements, which are uh, something that uh, most likely you already have. So, but um, the two, one and two, can run concurrently. As you're signing the basic forms with PAPS, you can be seeking the, um, the letter of no objection from the uh, central bank. So, but once we have both of them cleared, we we'll just, um, these three will run in parallel with uh, uh, one. You don't do anything in three. Based on the information you provide to us, we perhaps we run KYC to know who you are. And once we are done with that KYC, technical integration will just start. We will just create you in PAPS, start technical integration, and um, I can tell you, we also have uh, integrators in different African uh, regions, which is good that we are meeting with you here. Those areas also you can play, but those integrators also help us to integrate commercial banks and different entities. So, um, so if you have your technical, of course you are FinTech, you have your technical resources to integrate, um, PAPS integration, a maximum within three weeks, we should be out of sight to integrate you. So you just take decisions of um, what are the channels that you want to expose perhaps at the rest of them. But very important uh, points here, um, when you sign the FinTech agreement, which is number one there, you sign, FinTech will sign sponsorship agreement with a bank of choice. You know, I said in the beginning that fintechs will be integrated to PAPS, but you bring a bank of your choice. You already have a bank you're banking with. You bring that bank, we can have a call uh, with you and the commercial bank in Nigeria, and two of you will sign a document that they want to sponsor you. That's all. So you can see one and two on the other side. You see, as you are signing indirect participant uh, uh, form with PAPS, you're signing the agreement with a commercial bank to sponsor you. Then FinTech will obtain letter of no objection, which I say we, the requirement to be shared, we can share with you. Or you, we sh uh, once you sign, we'll just write an email to CBN, the, the department that handles that. Then FinTech passes uh, a PAPS KYC. Once you supply us uh, the major um, uh, um, requirements that we, we are sending to you, you pass the KYC, what we call MANSA. We have a division called that handles KYC for Africa. Then once you have a, a Mansa ID, which we will give you, then we go into technical integration and uh, go live. The event featured an interactive session on the integration of fintechs in the PAPS platform. Mr. Deremi Atonda, the Managing Director, Remita Payment System Limited, from the fintech industry perspective, shared the value of the stakeholder forum and the prospects ahead. Um, I think PAPS is a great initiative and today's engagement with Nigerian's fintech community has just further entrenched that. It's obvious that they were taking their time to build at the back and had a plan to bring on different stakeholders. And it's obvious from the engagement PAPS considers the fintech community a very strategic stakeholder. And by what we've seen today, it's ready to roll. And the Nigerian fintech community obviously at the um, front end of making things happen in Africa with the huge attendance we saw on ground and online. This clear perhaps is very much welcome. The processes and procedures for getting onboarded are also made clearer. It is also clear that the evolution in working with the central banks and the banks in Nigeria and other African countries have made things a lot more clearer where adjustments need to be made. And I think kudos needs to be given to the Central Bank of Nigeria that has recently released guidelines on participation um, on PAPS to deepen things, to remove some identified barriers. And with this in place, uh, I believe um, it's a great time to be around. Uh, 
inter African trade will definitely prosper on account of PAPS. And fintechs are obviously great catalysts working with banks to make this happen. In terms of the whole process for engagement, indirect participants and all that, uh, what is the fintech community going to do more to ensure that all those issues highlighted will be addressed in due time? Yeah, I mean, kudos to fintech Nigeria. And I think it's one of those things where you can have the industry voice that represents the aggregate thoughts and opinions of people in industry. I believe fintech Nigeria uh, will make more of these things happen not just at the national level, but the continental level. And this is one great bit of it, of putting things together that represents the thoughts of fintech uh, ecosystem in Nigeria that can be part of PAPS. And I just expect that many more of this will happen. And you saw the great interest by the trustees of fintech Nigeria, by all the companies represented, and other financial persons. And I just, I'm just very excited about the opportunity and what this holds for fintechs in Nigeria. With over 120 African banks signed on the PAPS platform and 60 plus banks already live, the aspirations of an inclusive payment gateway will be achieved through the integration of fintechs. This will support SMEs and scale cross-border transactions in the region.